Welcome to this overview of the Workday and UKG Pro connector provided by Elgin LLC. My name is Zach and I'm going to be walking you through a practical demonstration of the tool in action. So to kind of set the stage here, there are a, a number of applications and windows we're going to hop into. So the first will be inside of the system of record, which is Workday. Uh, so we'll, we'll spend some time here. This is where we'll actually be initiating the integration and also previewing some of the payloads that are going to be on their way to UKG Pro. We'll also uh, specifically be looking to add Nicole Williams here as a new hire uh, into UKG Pro and then updating some information for Jared Ellis inside of UKG Pro. Uh, so inside of the UKG side of the house right now, we can see that Jared Ellis actually exists. He's here. Call out that his address is 333F for line two. And that's going to be something that we're updating uh, via the integration mechanism. Likewise, if we look and see if there's anybody named Nicole inside of UKG Pro, we see that there is not. And so once we actually process the integration, we'll see her record appear as a new hire. We'll also spend a little bit of time here. This is where the code itself is actually being compiled and run. So the integration lives inside of a uh, Amazon Web Service hosted uh, cloud environment. And this is what we're using to actually do all of the change detection, uh, analysis, business routing, and ultimately committing the records into UKG. Uh, we'll also see an interaction into Slack. So you can see a couple of other sort of uh, records that were written here. This is where we're doing some error handling. And we'll see an overall log report hit this email address, which currently is empty. So as we're processing a run, this is we would expect to see an email here with some log files attached as an example. So that's the setting the stage component. Let's go ahead and get started. From the Workday home screen, uh, in this environment, what we've done is created a request framework specifically for this connector. So you'd go to new request, creating a request, pick the one that you need, and you'll be presented with this screen inside of Workday. And basically what's being asked here is to input a date range to perform an evaluation of any changes that have occurred inside of Workday. And what this does is sort of incre increases or improves the latency and processing time. So if I wanted to see changes that have happened in the last 24 hours, I could do that. Otherwise, I might do something like December 1st through the 14th. And I want to capture all changes that have occurred for the fields that we're interested in for all active and terminated workers inside of Workday. And we're going to pass that along uh, as a starting point parameters into the integration run. So I'd say this is what I'm interested in doing, and I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. Great. So that has actually initiated the integration. If you are used to seeing uh, Workday, and you'll know that you can look find specific integrations and look at the events. Take a look at all time, that's fine. We'll go here. And this is the integration that we actually just started running from that request framework. So it's still processing. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a refresh here. And another one. Typically, the latency is pretty good here. Uh, and this is really just to deliver those inputted values along with some other items to the pipeline inside of our uh, cloud instance. Great, so 35 seconds later, we're done. Um, and a couple of things just happened. So first, there's going to be a new hire attempt for Nicole. Um, that new hire attempt is going to fail. That's because I've intentionally added in an issue inside of the payload to prevent that from processing correctly to show you what an error might look like. Uh, Jared's record will now have updated uh, the address. So as opposed to being, yep, unit 3C now, as opposed to unit 333C. So you actually can see that change has happened already. 
and we'll see that there is nothing here for Nicole. Um, and we'll also get an error message to our Slack channel. So this is maybe a little difficult to read. This is fully configurable. But what we're seeing here is that for this new hire attempt that the SSN exists for another employee. And that's because I've hard coded it inside of the designer. And I'll fix that in a moment. We'll rerun and clear that error out. Uh, we also should have received an email. And there it is. And this email will contain two different file types. One is this log.json. which again is maybe not super readable, but if we throw it into something like this, it actually becomes like pretty easy to read through what's going on here. So for Jared Ellis, we can see that what we were trying to do is do an update address. Uh, we see that the success was true and it doesn't look like there's any errors here. So that one's good. Uh, for Nicole Williams, we're actually seeing that success is a false. There's a problem with this payload and specifically the problem if we kind of cycle through it, we'll find here. So it's the same messaging we got inside of Slack. It's just it's been consolidated into this unified report to give us the status of the overall run. And then also there's another employee here who didn't have any, any updates at all. Um, so there were changes that occurred inside of Workday enough that he was flagged as potentially needing to have something updated inside of UKG. So we did the comparison for change detection in Workday. And then we moved to the next step, which is to actually compare Workday to UKG directly. And so while Matt Knox had a change inside of Workday between December 1st and the 14th, his data inside of UKG uh, was already up to date. So that's, not, that's a record we didn't have to do anything with, and so it's, it's ignored. But it will pop up here showing you that it was, it was a record that was evaluated. It wasn't just omitted. Uh, we can also take a look at the full log of employees that were evaluated via this run. And in this case, we have 243, excluding out the header line, 243 records. So what that means is that we had 243 employees in Workday uh, that we evaluated any changes that have occurred to their records between December 1st and the 14th. Out of that number, three were actually flagged for processing, which is what we were seeing here. And one of those was a new hire that aired out and had a problem. The other was an address update that worked successfully. And so we have a really good insight into what happened during this particular transaction. Uh, the delivery method of these files for the, for the logs, um, whether you want it CSV inside of something like JSON or something else, um, that's entirely configurable. So as we go through implementation, we can help set that up for you to whatever requirement you have. Um, we're using email in this case, and I showed you sort of the Slack component for the same run. Um, if you have an SFTP or some other mechanism where you'd like this, this log info delivered or error messaging delivered, we can accommodate that too, and that's relatively easy. Uh, so that would also be part of the, the implementation step. So let's take a look at the designer and at that error we had processing the new hire event. So I sort of pre... Uh, pre-compiled here so you can see what's going on. But uh, let's hop up here actually. Basically, this is the parent that we're invoking via the API. And there's a bunch of other stuff going on in the background to communicate with Workday and UKG. So it's sort of under the hood here. Um, you can get like a little bit of a preview of some of those things. So again, there's more sort of configuration available there. It's a little bit beyond scope for this particular demonstration. Uh, but we know that the issue is actually inside of the new hire outbound, and that's because I hard-coded a fake social security number for that record. So let's go ahead and actually change that. What this is doing is, is actually mapping to a variable. So as the data comes in from Workday, we'll be pulling, in this case, Nicole's actual social security number. And with that error removed, once we go ahead and rerun and re-execute, uh, we should see uh, the, the record process correctly. So let's go back here and we'll repeat steps. 
and we'll pick the same date range. Okay. And we'll submit. Great. So that's going. Go ahead and pull up the event log so we can see that this is kind of, this is being transacted. And we'll give that a couple seconds. So what, what's going to happen here is the information will be picked up. Uh, the new hire inf the new hire payload did not complete successfully last time, which was no surprise because we planned for that as part of the demo. So this time we should see that transaction conclude successfully. Um, we also wouldn't expect to see the address update occurring for Jared this time because his data was updated in the last run. So when we get that transaction log, what I would expect to see are the same three records, but this time two of them being listed as records to ignore and one being listed as a new hire event. All right, so processing time, right around the same amount of time, 32 seconds. So that's complete. Did we get anything in Slack? It doesn't look like it, so that's good, because this is where we're posting errors only. Did we get something inside of our inbox? Yes, we did. Let's take a look at that. All right, and we'll throw that into the formatter here. And take a look. Okay, great. So here's the new hire information. So we actually got a couple of warnings here for this employee, although we see that the new hire transaction was true. And we're seeing that the effective date is more than 30 days in the past for date of last hire. It's because this record is a little bit older, um, but that's okay. Warnings actually don't prevent the data commit from occurring. So if we hop into UKG and do another search for Nicole. Yeah, there she is. So we've got Nicole Williams at 222 Lane Road, Unit 33, which you can see is the same as this year. So that's how easy it is to conduct the transactions. Um, so let's take a quick step through some of the options and what and what's going on sort of behind the scenes here. Uh, what we've done is set up a number of web services to the UKG Pro side, which are each of these purple boxes. And we've simplified the data extraction from Workday using those date ranges as a start. Um, as an aside, if you wanted to get all transactions that have occurred within a certain period or just the top of stack, you could do that too from that same screen. Um, and that's just by setting the start and end date to the same, the same date. And you'll actually just process every single transaction and do a full comparison between your Workday records and your UKG records. So that'll force a, a, a full system to system compare. Uh, but you have the option to do new hires, terminations, and then a series of updates. And these are broken out inside of the web services on the UKG side into updates to like address, employment information, um, compensation, personal details, information about your job, and then the phone information. And so we'll route updates to the correct services based on what we're seeing inside of our change detection service pulling in from Workday. So by default, um, what we provide to customers is the Workday interface, the request framework stand up, and the API outbound to uh, the cloud hosted integration. Uh, and we provide the outbound log files and other items. Typically, access directly into the tool itself is not provided to customers directly. Um, however, that is something you know, we can kind of discuss or, or walk through. Um, we've had success with the strategy of having change requests come through to us because it's a very simple process to make updates. Um, which would actually start with one more element that I do want to hit on, and that is what's driving the data extraction from 
from Workday. And so this is the other item that we would put into place for, for you as a customer. And this is a web service enabled custom report. So this is uh, reports as a service or RAS inside of the Workday parlance. And what we've done is curated a custom report schema that conforms to the uh, expected schemas for the web services in the UKG Pro side. What that means is that you have a very, very easy way to access and change which information you want to be surfaced inside of the evaluation looking for data changes. So if there's something that's not included with our default template, you can make those updates here within Workday, and then it's a very simple change request or update request to our team to say, hey, here are the new fields. Can you please map that to XYZ inside of UKG Pro? And if you're not exactly sure where it would go inside of the web services, that's okay. It's part of what we're here to help you out with. And so what we'll do is take a look at what you're trying to do and then just make the update inside the designer. Um, and those updates, because of the method that we're using here, which is sort of this low code, low touch environment, those updates are very easy. So we'll get a near real time update into the Workday data poll. We'll see the new items and new fields that you've added uh, almost immediately. And then it's just a very simple exercise of sort of adding in a couple of updates in two or three spots and, uh, and rolling that out to production for you to go ahead and start using. So that whole process end to end is designed to be very, very smooth and very easy and to prevent you from having to spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to manipulate the individual items here as there is a, a fair bit of nuance. All right. Well, that's it for this demo. We'll go ahead and call it there. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Visit us at elginllc.com. That's E-L-J-U-N-L-L-C.com. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.